Hi, my name's D. I review rums, and this is 1833. So I was wrapping it up and I thought, I got something more I wanted to say. So I did talk about Carnival and so I wanted to talk about this one as well. So, this one's a bit more controversial. This one's a bit more controversial. So, the question, question this is more of a question, the other was a statement. And this next one is more of a question. And the question is, When it comes to Israel and Palestinians and Gaza specifically at this moment, but by the Palestinian people in general, when will it be too much? When, when will enough be enough? And in my mind, and this might sound pretty extreme and it might sound really outlandish, but I think I am not entirely certain. So, so let me, before I get to my point, Israel is an unofficial holder of nuclear weapons. So there are, there are a few nuclear, a few official nuclear states in the world. And again, I should look this up. So I kind of, I think I know some top of my head, but so you have Russia, Pakistan, India, France, UK, USA, North Korea. I think those are the seven countries that are officially nuclear states, that have official nuclear weapons programs declared, what have you. There are a few states that have had in the past, got rid of them, so for example, Ukraine and I think South Africa had in the past and they've got rid of them. And I believe Israel, and maybe another other state, are thought to have had, but have not sort of declared that they have. So back to my thought, I am not entirely sure, and I probably wouldn't because it's too close to them, but it's none, nevertheless, I'm not sure if, if Israel was to drop a, tact, a tactical nuke, because it's still a nuke, and it's just a smaller warhead and what have you, it still causes a, a, a tremendous amount of damage, um, just up to the same degree as a proper nuclear weapon. But if, nuclear, if Israel was to drop a tactical nuke in, Palestine, Gaza. I am not entirely certain that the world will condemn. I'm not sure what the world, what the world nation, what the states around the world will do. I'm not sure if they would, inv would, I'm not sure what they would do, what they could do, but I'm not certain that there'd be any real repercussions other than some words to Israel. And that is, I guess it's terrifying for the Palestinians, I guess it's terrifying for people in the borders of Israel and so the neighbours, so I guess it's terrifying for those in um, Lebanon, it's terrifying for those Egypt perhaps as well. I think I am not so. You know, have you ever watched a film or seen in real life a person like no? Usually mothers, usually mothers and sons, and their this mother almost excuses everything their child does. Okay, typically, somebody their child can do no wrong. You can't tell their mum that their child does anything wrong. There's always an excuse. There's always a reason why. And I feel the rest of the world does the same with Israel. That there's nothing that they can do wrong. There's always an excuse, there's always a rationale. There's never, any time they get just told off, it's a very like hard thing. And which is the reason why I don't think, I'm sorry I'm playing this a little bit. Which is the reason why 
I don't, I'm not sure there's anything they can do wrong that, that the world will condemn. Happy for anyone to tell me I'm wrong. Happy for anyone to say that the line that international community will take is is this, is the line. But I don't I don't think there is a line. I don't I honestly don't believe there is a I don't think there is. I don't think I don't think there's a point where it moves from condemning their actions to actually doing something about it. Because in my experience, any time it moves to somebody trying to do something about it, you're very quickly hit with being anti-Semitic. And I imagine me even just having this conversation that I'll, you know, if enough people hit watch it, that I'll be hit with the same, same words. Yeah, and that's that's also very sad that you can't have an honest conversation about the Israeli state without being accused of being anti-Semitic. Um, when it's evident, and, and this is a bit more right actually, because it's evident to me that if Israel wanted to do what they're doing of Hamas, what have you, and be more tactical, they could be because in, a, in recent weeks, right, they took out two senior people in Hamas, one in Tehran, 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 I don't, I don't think I'm trying to pronounce it correctly, and one in Beirut. And when they took those people out, there wasn't huge amounts of damage in and around the area of what they were doing. So that proves to me that when they want to be precise, when they want to do something about causing a lot of collateral damage, they can do so. Yet the same approach isn't taken in Gaza. When they're taking, when they're taking uh, members of Hamas and what have you in, in Gaza, they take, they're not, it's not just one building or one car they're destroying, they're destroying neighborhoods. So that again goes to the theory that they're not trying to be, they're not, they are what they're doing is per, is they're doing what they're doing on purpose. There's no accident. There's no there is there's no um, there's not there's no precision in what they're doing, and it's not it's known because it's, it's dem, it's, they've demonstrated that they could do it differently, and yet our world leaders not say anything about it. So it just says to me that there is no line. There isn't a line. Or the line, maybe the line is so far away that I can't see it. But um, that's my thoughts. I'm happy to be told I'm anti-Semitic. I'm happy to be told I'm wrong. Those are my thoughts.